Pray the Lord, brethren, and you are most welcome again to this session. God is good, and just like we always say, all the time, and all the time he remains good, and so his timing is the best. And so we thank God that this time around we are having an opportunity again to resume our churches, and uh, although partially, but we thank God for this far that he has brought us. I welcome you after lockdown, and uh, we thank God for this milestone, and we pray that God will continue unveiling his goodness uh, as we go along. And as I come today, I thank God for the portions of scripture that I'm going to share today. But let first of all, let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this time that you are giving us as your children to ponder or to meditate upon your word. We ask you that you bless us with abundant blessings to understand you more and more like men and women of old understood you and they served you in faithfulness in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, at this time I come with a topic, hope in hopeless situations, and um, it speaks very loudly in my ears, and it has, it has spoken already, and I know it will continue speaking to you as uh, we go along. And this day, I just want us to think about a man in the Bible. This man is called Gideon. But before I talk about Gideon, when we talk about hope in hopeless situations, we have a litany of men and women. It's a list, a long list of men and women um, where they have exhibited hope in hopeless situations. Begin with Abraham, the man and the, I mean that man and his wife Sarah were in a hopeless situation, no children. And then you go along and you'll find a litany, I mean a, a long list of men and women that have exhibited hope in hopeless situations. Now, let me concentrate on the man called Gideon. And Gideon in the Bible, in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 1, and I want us to read, we shall end at verse 16. And I just desire that God's word speaks by itself, because every comment that I will be making, I will be basing on this portion. And this Bible tells me that there was a time when there was a group of people called Midianites who oppressed Israel for a very long time. And the Bible says that then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up, also Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts, both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried to the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord, God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out because before you 
and gave you their land. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now verse 10, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the Tabernacle tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abiezite, which while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my God, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us unto, into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So Gideon said to him, O oh my God, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you. And you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Praise the Lord, brethren. This is the scripture that I desired to bring to you today. That God does his work. And his timing is the best. And remember from this portion that God does not call ready-made heroes where there is... You know, someone is already mad. God calls timid people, fearful people, smaller people. And we have heard men and women in the Bible that have given excuses. And the reason why they give excuses is because their unwillingness is based on God. That unless God himself does it, we human beings, there's nothing that we can do. So, God turns the timid, God turns the fearful into wonderful uh, victors. He makes the way where there seems to be no way. He turns the protesting, trembling people. He turns those who are trembling. He turns those who are protesting into brave souls. And so even during our time, my brothers and sisters, we have our own challenges that face us, like these men. And the one that we're talking about here now is Gideon. He was faced with the unapproved task. The Midianites have subdued Israel for a long time. The Midianites and the Amalekites have come. They always come to destroy their crops, that whenever they would grow their crops, they would come and destroy them with their camels and their oxen. But God now appears at this time to tell Gideon, get out. He changed him in order to go and change the situation in Israel. And so Gideon is the man, reluctant and flawed, but God calls him to go and do the work. And remember that in traits of leadership, godly leadership, people exhibit willingness, unwillingness, unless God himself takes a lead. And so, friends, that we need to depend on God at all times. So sometimes you can be holed up in the thicker walls of helplessness. Remember Gideon was in a wine press and hiding there to thresh the corn to hide it from the Midianites. Now, in the wine press down there, in the hole down there, hiding down there. Remember for the last seven months, friends, we've been holed up. We were holed up because we are devastated by coronavirus. We are devastated by COVID-19 and it is still ravaging the world. And we are being holed up 
in hopelessness, we have been holed up in trembling, we have been holed up in anxiety. And so I bring this message this day that may God who spoke to Gideon to come out and liberate the people of Israel, not in his own might, but in the might of God, may he raise up men and women at this, during this generation that will bring hope in this hopeless situation. Remember the other men, Elijah. Elijah was also held up on the mountain, um, held up there in the cave, and took a whisper, as we read in 1 Kings chapter 19, he took a whisper from God that Elijah was able to come out, and indeed, God performed great things to Elijah. So Elijah, talk, talk about Elijah, talk about Gideon, talk about Moses, talk about Joshua. But all, all of us, all of them are in the hideout. They are in a cave. They are in a wine press. You and me could be in a wine presses where we are oppressed. Things are not going well. We are hiding ourselves. We are fearful. We are trembling. We are anxious. Brethren, the God who appeared to Gideon, may he appear to someone today. The God who appeared to Gideon, may he appear to someone this time. The God who appeared to Gideon, may he be the one who appears to me today. That you take your position, I take my position. Gideon did, and indeed he came out, and he did great things. There are times when Satan builds caves and wine presses for us, and so that we can hide there making mental and emotional caves for us. You find, you know, you, you can imagine how people are devastated, stressed. Not one, not two, but all of us. You can imagine someone getting stressed to the extent that someone can buy petrol, pour on himself, and light a matchbox and throw on themselves. Stress, disappointment, anxiety. And that's the wine press. That is the hole. That's the cave that certain digs for God's people. Now, despair too much, languishing there. Now, I pray for you and I pray for myself that we need to identify our areas where I need to step out. You need to identify your areas where you need to step out. Gideon stepped out and um, he served the Lord. So to live in hope, do the following as I end, that listen to God, be on the lookout for the voice of God. Gideon listened and he came out. Gideon was the weakest of the weak. And he, he says that my tribe is the weakest. And so friends, listen to God. Can we position ourselves to listen to God's voice? Gideon was busy doing his work, but I imagine he was positioned. Number two, do whatever God calls you to do. And could be a little sound, could be a whisper. Like Elijah, you remember? Just a whisper on the mountain. And God spoke to him. So there are some things that may look crazy, look illogical, by human yardsticks. And Gideon was the man that we are talking about here now. So my friends, God speaks to us. There are certain things we are called to do against common sense. And so this time around, there are certain things that we are called upon to do. They are against common sense. Remember when you read the story ahead from chapter 6 of these judges, 6, 7, 8, God tells the man that to go with 300 men against 135,000 Midianites. And you can imagine, it is against common sense. So this time around, my brother, my sister, may God enable us, may God enable you, that we gain hope in these hopeless situations, that we shall not be uh, overtaken, but we cross over. Like the children of Israel crossed over, it was actually against common sense also that actually Moses could strike the water of the Red Sea and it parted. So the huge wall of, of Jericho breaking, it was not an easy thing. So we needed to navigate around. My brothers and sisters, I thank the Lord that Gideon speaks a message I have not exhausted but God continues speaking to you through Judges chapter 6. The man Gideon, a mighty man of valor, a mighty man of war. So this time round, rise up. Rise up. Hope in this hopeless situation. And so that actually people will look at you and gain hope. And people may look at me and gain hope. But God uses the weak of the weakest. The weakest of the weak. So that actually brings his hand of might is revealed. May he reveal something to you. I pray with you. Stand up and be counted. During this COVID time, may we remain strong in the faith. So Lord God, we thank you 
that everyone that has listened and we shall continue thinking through this chapter 6 of Judges and other portions of the scripture to get hope, to gain hope, to stand against the hopeless situations to, that bring us anxiety, that bring us despair, that bring us disappointment. And I pray for my brethren that you bless them and bless all of us that as we restart church services, that we restart congregations, you reveal yourself more, like you revealed yourself to Gideon. We are waiting for mighty, much more mighty things that you are going to do to us in this time than never before. Thank you, God. Bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.